Hi, thank you for joining us today on Realty Check. I'm your host, Trish Williams, and we are still in this financing series. We're in part seven this morning, and today we're gonna to be talking about purchasing investment properties using financing. So we have a special guest with us today, Arturo Pradera of Altera, Arturo Pradera of Altera Home Loans. Um, and Arturo is going to give us his expert advice and um, walk us through how you can use financing to purchase an investment property, which is pretty exciting. Yeah. yeah so Arturo, tell us a little bit about yourself. Uh, well, I've been in the mortgage business now uh, 13 uh, plus years. Um, been in Las Vegas 30 some years, uh, so I know the, the valley pretty well. I've been with Altera Home Loans, where I'm at now. I'll, it'll be 10 years in a couple of weeks. So oh, wow. I'm excited. That's, that's a long time for anybody to be at one company. So Absolutely. Uh, but I'm very happy there. So um, And, uh, you know, we do a good amount of business. And I, I don't, won't say I'm an expert, but I, I'm pretty close, I'd say. Oh, you are an expert. <laughs> I've worked with you. you are, you're definitely an expert. Yeah. You know what you're doing. You know your stuff. And you're very, um, you're, you're very precise in everything. So I, I appreciate that. Thank you. So I only have experts on the show. I just want to say that out there. Only I, experts. I was trying to be Modest. <laughs> so, uh, so good. Thank you for joining us today. So there's right now, I mean, real estate is the number one thing to invest in, right? Yes. It's, it's the number one money maker for people um, these days. And not only investing in real estate as your primary residence and owning a home can build you wealth, of course, for the future, but there's a lot of money to be made, a lot of wealth to be made mm -hmm. by owning a home as an investment property where you're oh, yeah. getting rent every month and mm -hmm. making passive income off real estate. And I don't think it's common knowledge out there that you can use financing to do this. A lot of people think that if you need to buy an investment property, you have yeah, to have the cash, cash to mm -hmm. do so. And there are options uh -huh. to finance investment properties. Absolutely. Yes. Yes. And that's what we're going to talk about today. So using financing to purchase an investment property, what does it generally take to qualify? I mean, I know there's a lot of um, layers to qualification, of course, but mm -hmm. generally, who is this product really um, the best for? Uh, well, I'd say it's about, uh, it's for anybody, honestly, like you, anybody can buy a property. I have, uh, ironically, we're having this conversation today because this last year, um, obviously real estate's been hot, but I've had a lot of people, just regular people buying investment properties. You know, I have a, a, a guy right now that had, he has a couple of properties, but now he's buying seven fourplexes oh um, my goodness. all at once, you know? Uh, after one property he sold in California, made good money, and now he's going to invest it all here on these properties. I have another lady that's all she does. That's all she does. She doesn't have a, a regular income as far as work, but she's bought um, three or four properties recently, investment properties. Right. Um, and these are just regular everyday people, so you don't have to you know, be a, a savvy investor. Obviously, you should study up on it and know what you're doing a little bit, but right. that's where we can help you as well. Right. Absolutely. And mm -hmm. that's something that you will guide and help and tell mm -hmm. them a little bit about how it works as they're getting started. Correct. Right. Absolutely. Yes. Yeah. And that, and that's really a good resource. And that is what you said exactly, I think is very important for people to know. You don't have to have a history in this. You don't have to have, mm -hmm. you don't have to be a real estate investor or have a background in it. An average person. And, and I see it all the time, average everyday people that are making mm -hmm really good solid income just mm -hmm. off of owning investment properties yeah like i said this uh, the the client i have now the lady um that's all she does this has like five properties now and buying more um, and that's all that's that's the income that we're using to qualify her for the other properties really so imagine that yeah she has no actual income that we used for a job or anything like that for her uh qualifications to buy these properties Wow, it's that's all amazing. From the rentals. Yeah. And and passive income, let me tell you, I call it mailbox money because it's like just money that you can earn in your sleep. So yes. it's, yeah. and it's no matter what sorry. a beautiful thing. No, it's a beautiful thing. It's it's a beautiful thing, yeah. I think no matter what what kind of work you do, you should look at different streams of income and passive income is what I'm referring to. Is that something that doesn't take a lot of your time, uh, but just has money coming in because you never know what could happen with a job or a, a, an, an industry in, in, in itself. Um, so when you have real estate being one of the, the best ones, uh, when you have that passive income, a rental property that's just making money, paying for itself, mm -hmm. it doesn't it doesn't get better than that, you know, especially in the long run. Yeah, and that's why I think this topic is so important is to open people's eyes to the potential that you could have with that, because mm -hmm. so many people you work a you know, you work a nine to five, you you go to work every day, you work a nine to five, you wait for retirement, and that's great. 
but there's so much more that can be done mm -hmm. and it doesn't take a special, you know, a special talent or skill to be able to do it. You can really, anybody can make it happen. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and that's, what's just amazing about it. So is there specific criteria for the property itself when, um, when you're purchasing an income property or an income producing property, mm -hmm. are there certain properties that would or would not qualify or does any property type really qualify um, for this? Well, um, you know, as, as far as residential, it's anywhere from one to four units. So you have the single family, you have a multifamily, which is two to four units. Anything above that is going to be considered commercial, like apartments, five, six, seven units and above. Um, so I think the only, maybe the only properties that wouldn't qualify necessarily are um, manufactured homes for mm -hmm. investment. You can buy that as a primary, but not as an investment. Um, and obviously any property that's run down or doesn't qualify for financing, period, you know. Yeah. So those know. homes that are like, yeah, just the... When I say the, run down, I mean in really bad shape because yeah. no house has to be perfect to buy it, so... It has to be in livable condition, have by, an AC... By a normal human being, yeah. Yeah, by a normal human being, <laughs> yeah, that's what some people I've seen properties livable. and the clients <laughs> want it so bad, they're like, but I'll live here, and I'm thinking that's not reasonable. <laughs> yeah, stove, it needs a stove, it needs floors, it needs windows, doors. Yeah. Um, unbroken it, windows, yeah. Yeah, unbroken <laughs> windows, uh, hot water, yeah. <laughs> AC, yeah. Yeah. All, yeah. all those things that... Yeah. the basic things that would make a home livable yeah. so that's in a in a, a good lump landlord not a slumlord <laughs> yeah a absolutely yeah. And, and that is important because you're looking to purchase an investment yeah you want something that's going to be basically solid you don't want to mm -hmm. you know purchase an investment that's going to be a money pit because right. then you're not going to make a lot of money off of it yeah well those are things you have to consider when you buy it because it be, could be something like hey you need to remodel it maybe um, bring it up to par a little bit um, and you're able to but it is financeable you're able to finance it and then you put some money into it but that's all the things you have to consider as far as your return on investment because when you buy it you're going to put some, some money down typically 20 percent uh, or more and then um, you are uh, maybe going to put some money you're going to probably in this market play closing costs and you're going to maybe have to fix it up a little bit so all the things to consider as far as the ROI on it mm -hmm. the cap rate so you're typically shooting for a five to six percent cap rate for the year in okay. this market which what that means is I'm going to give you an example um, these aren't exact numbers so I'm just kind of uh, but it's ballpark. just for an example ballpark yeah. so let's just say you buy a three hundred thousand dollar property and you put sixty percent I'm sorry twenty percent down which is sixty thousand okay um I'm just going to go with that number, not including anything you have to you have to pay in closing costs or to fix up the property. But now you're now the, let's just say the mortgage is fifteen hundred and you're renting it for eighteen hundred. Okay, um, and it's $300 as we all know, a month. you're income. making three hundred dollars a month. That's three hundred three thousand six hundred a year. That's good. You divide that by the sixty thousand you invested. That's a six percent cap rate. So that's where you want to be on, on your return on investment. It's three hundred dollars, and some people may take that three hundred dollars and keep it. So they might reinvest it back in the property so it pays itself faster. Yeah. Uh, but that's where you want to you wanna shoot for in that, in, that, in that range. And that makes such perfect sense. If you, if you had $60,000, for instance, mm -hmm. in a bank account, just a traditional savings account in the bank account, how anywhere. much money are you making? I don't keep my money, too much money in bank like that, so I don't know. I think I, it's I like, think like $5 a year. or something. Yeah, it's very, very little. Yeah, you know? you're not making a lot. And, you're not and, making a lot on interest. You're not making a lot of money. You put that sixty thousand dollars into real estate, and you can make three hundred three hundred dollars yeah. a month income. I mean, mm -hmm. that is going to pay you way more than any interest on any savings yeah. account will pay you. And that cap rate I mentioned doesn't even what I mentioned doesn't even include the appreciation on the property. Yes, you have to learn that's your, more your your area. But you know, property appreciates. You yes. know, and and it and it goes down too. Obviously, you know, uh, real estate is cyclical. I always look at investment properties as a buy and hold. You're not looking yeah. necessarily to buy it and sell it right away, unless the market appreciates crazily. Yeah. Uh, a little bit like now. <laughs> a little bit like now, yeah. But even then, you know, it's it may not be worth it. It may it may not be enough money. It may if you look at it more in the long run, and it's paying for itself. So now you're building equity. You're lowering the balance on it. Maybe eventually it it pays itself off. Now you have a, a free and clear property, just bringing in income. Absolutely. That one day you could sell um, for your retirement or invest in something else. I mean, yeah. real estate is is always a, a good buy. I, I wouldn't say always, but it's a it's a one of the best investments you can make. I, many millionaires have been made in real estate. We're absolutely, and I agree with that 100%. I've had clients that had investment properties for the long term, and, and absolutely, you're right. Markets will, they go up and down. Uh -huh. that, that, that is what it is. Happens in mm -hmm. the stock market, happens in real estate, happens in everything, um, but it's the long-term investment. You write it out absolutely. at the time when it goes down. You know, I mean, I've seen the, 
the people that all you know, dumped their properties and ran from them when the market crashed. And now they're looking back like, gosh, I wish I would have kept that home mm -hmm. because the it, it did come back. And I believe it will always come back. You always need somewhere to live. Over over time, you know, obviously we we've only lived a certain lifespan, but over time, if you look back, it's happened, you know, over and over the, mm -hmm. the cycles, up and down. So. Yeah, you write it out. You buy you, you buy real estate mm -hmm. with the intention of it being a long term investment, and in the long term, it's going to pay off. Mm -hmm. And in the long term, you're also going to not only have you made that income monthly, yearly over the long the time that you've had it, mm -hmm. but the appreciation. At the mm -hmm. time that you sell it, you get paid again. <laughs> so yeah. it's definitely um, worth it, you know, worth it in the in the end. And, right. um, and and properties are a lot of times are appreciating, you know, right now. Yeah. Cost of living is also going up. I mean, yeah. my my grandparents had a home that was, you know, fifty thousand dollars when they bought it, and that that home now they don't own it anymore. But that home now is is worth eight hundred thousand. So it's you yeah. know long term real estate does appreciate because cost yeah. of living appreciates. Yeah. Well, and real estate usually stays ahead of inflation as well. Yes. Yeah. Yes, mm -hmm. absolutely. So you talked a little bit about down payment. How much down payment would somebody need to um, plan on having to mm -hmm. be able to purchase an investment property? So on a single family, um, it, technically you can do 15% down on an investment property. Um, would yeah, that have high most rates? People, yeah, it's <laughs> going to have a higher rate though. Yeah. Um, you know, you're financing more, um, more risk for the bank. So the higher rate, um, you're going to have some mortgage insurance. And I think it kind of defeats the purpose because if you're trying to keep the payment lower so you can rent it out and make a little profit, when you have now you're financing more, your rate's higher, you have mortgage insurance. It might not be a lot because it's only 5% over 80 loan to value, but you are going to have mortgage insurance. So now your payment's going to be a little bit you know, higher than, it, than what it could be, and you're trying to rent it. You might not be making the, the return on investment you, you're hoping for. So 20% is, is usually the norm uh, for, for investment property. Okay. Yeah. And then, of course, the more you put what, down, the better package you get, the better rate, yeah, the better yeah. deal. Typically, you get, well, you know, at 20%, you have no mortgage insurance. And then, yeah, if you put more down, you're financing less, first of all, and you're typically going to uh, get a better rate. Like maybe uh, recently I had a, a, a lady, um, again, another lady who just out of nowhere started buying two investment, bought, bought two investment properties with me. Never bought an investment property before. Own a home. Um, uh, but so it's interesting how people now with the rates low and Vegas growing and she lives in California. So yeah. she knows that Vegas is hot, you know? Yeah. Um, but, um, she went from putting down 20 and she decided, you know what? I, I she got a little more money from uh, something and she goes, I want to, I want to put another 5% down. Her rate dropped a half a point. Okay. And I, I'm not going to say that's going to happen with everybody, but it's just an example. So yeah. And that just helps with lowering that payment. Like yeah. I said, that's, that's, that's the, the key. And that, yeah, and that's the intention. You're mm -hmm. buying a property to make, um, you know, to make yeah. income off of. So you want to have the best case scenario as possible, and, and if you have the ability to put down the extra yeah. money. Yeah, and one thing people sh you know, should should know as well, um, like the, the 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 lady I have that has four or five properties now, investment properties, is that you're qualifying with the rent, the expected rent for that property. Um, or the actual rent. So what happens is when you buy an investment property, they, um, the, the appraiser does a couple additional reports. One is if there's a tenant in there now, what it's renting for now, and what's the, um, what the actual that you could get for that property um, based on uh, market rents. Um, so let's just say it, it, right now it's renting for 1600 but it could rent for 1900 Okay. Um, so you keep that in mind because once your tenant, your lease is up with the current tenant, if there's a current tenant, um, but you're actually using that money to qualify. You know, a percentage of that, 75% of that you would actually use to qualify. Okay. So it's not like you have to qualify with your income only. You know what I okay, mean? so you don't have to be, basically, if you own a home right now mm -hmm. and you're wanting to buy an investment property, you don't have to typically be able to qualify for two mortgages, two no. full mortgages. No. You just have to be able to qualify for 25% of that payment right. on the investment yeah. property. Yeah. So I've had situations, you know, in, in um, where, where the 75% of the um, mortgage, I'm sorry, of the rent didn't actually cover the mortgage of the property they're buying because it's only 75%. It's not the full 100% we're using. Um, but the, uh, and then with the person's other income, they, quali they qualify for the property. So, okay. Yeah. So their, their income can play into that as well. Yeah. And another thing that I'm sure that people out there are probably thinking of, so there's a lot of people out, the, out there, you know, I mean, probably more, more than not, that don't have, you know, $60,000 right now in their pocket or 
in their account, but they might own homes that have $60,000 worth of equity in their homes. Are uh, they able to like do a refinance, pull yeah. out that equity and use that equity to purchase a, yes, an investment absolutely. property? Yes, absolutely. I, I got a call from a lady yesterday who, who just actually finished paying off her home. She bought the home with me a few years ago and she's put as much money as she could. And she's like, now I want to buy another property. Can I pull that money out? And I'm like, yeah, if you want to, you'll have another mortgage, but yeah. uh, it'll be small because you're only pulling out. And she actually, it was 60,000 that she said. So, <laughs> How funny. Yeah. So yeah, you can, um, and obviously that's just a number we're using, but um, yeah. yeah, you can, you can do that. If you have enough equity, um, which people have bought at a certain time years ago, now have a lot of equity in their home. You're Absolutely. seeing that a lot. That's why a lot of people are are uh, in a good position to sell right now as well because you know the market's up so yeah um, but yeah if you um, obviously there's percentages you can't cash out the full amount unless you sell the property mm -hmm. um, the the max on a cash out is 80% of the, of the loan to value so if your home's worth 300 you can finance 240 that pays off the mortgage you have now let's just say your mortgage is 120 some closing costs the rest for, of that 240 is your money to to do with what you like oh in so this there's case, no penalties you turn around on... and, and invest it on a on a on a on an investment property. Right. So there's no penalties on that. And if somebody wanted to do that, they could contact you and you'd be able to handle the whole process from the refi to the purchase. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. I've done quite a bit of that, especially oh. lately. Like I said, people in, in this last year, I've been doing this over 13 and a half years. Uh, I, this last year I've had the most people buy uh, as investments uh, ever yeah. in all the time I've been doing this. It's very interesting. Yeah, well, it is interesting. It's a, it's a great idea. People are seeing the market is continuing to, to raise and not only that, it's just, it's so astounding that it raised during a pandemic. You know, when you think, that yeah. when, you, when you expected everything to crash, it, it just kept going up, which is a really good indicator of how stable I feel like our market yeah. is going to stay for a while. I think there's a, there, there's a lot of factors in that, obviously, why, why uh, you know, the markets are appreciating. But, um, you know, if, if you look back before the pandemic, Vegas was growing. A lot of things it were was. happening here. You know, we have a couple of professional teams. We have um, casinos being built, the sphere, uh, homes are being built. There's a lot going on here. It can slow down with the pandemic, but it's not going to go away. It's still going to happen. So, um, you know, once we start opening up and getting back to normal, which we already have, um, Vegas is, is growing and it's getting a much more attractive city for people to come to live in. Absolutely. Yeah. And it is. It's the place to be. Mm -hmm. If there, if you ever have a chance to look at the, there's a, there's a county website, something, I think it's called Las Vegas 2050, which is, I know it's, it sounds like a long time from now, but it's really it's not. not. <laughs> it's really not that far away. <laughs> but the plans for this city, there is so much in the works and oh, yeah. so many things going on. So many areas that were just kind of, I guess, left alone and abandoned mm -hmm. that they have big plans for. Oh, yeah. Things are going to be changing. We're going to see a lot of changes there, and it's a lot of exciting things that's going to bring in mm -hmm. more business, new people. I mean, the older parts of Vegas are starting to be renovated. They're all turning around. There's a lot happening here. I think Absolutely. it's the place to be. We don't have a beach, but we have a lake. So. <laughs> not the same, Trish. I, I miss the beach. I'm a beach, the, I'm a beach boy. <laughs> it's not the same. I was joking yesterday. We're probably an earthquake away from a beach, but uh, that's, just, funny. That, that's, that's, funny. that's eerie. Bye, Cal Sorry, just California. Joking. Not funny. Sorry, nah, California. But Vegas, yeah, it's, uh, you know, I've been here a long time, 31 years now, and, and it got to a point, it got a little tiring for me, um, you know, just being here a long time. And, uh, and I, miss, I like I said, I miss the beach. Um, so I kind of was really thinking like about moving, but in the last few years, I've, I've changed my, my perception of it because Vegas is actually becoming a, a very cool city. Yeah. Think, yeah. It's not know. just this little desert with casinos. It's, yeah. it, it's changing a lot and, yeah. and it is, things are changing. And everybody's here. welcome. Yeah. Okay. I know a lot of people don't want Californians coming here for some reason, but <laughs> they're all you know, I'm more than welcome. I was born in California. <laughs> There's so many Californians here right now. I, I mean, it's just I, I, Californians probably don't want Vegas people here anymore. <laughs> that's, wow, we're, we're outnumbered. Yeah, we're we're definitely getting outnumbered. <laughs> <laughs> we are definitely getting outnumbered. So, um, uh, how's income verified for the property qualification? So. The income on the property, I think you said that they verify the rents. They're going to yes. check the rental comps. They're going to make sure that this property can produce the amount of monthly income to cover the payment. Yeah, the appraiser, like I said, when, when we do an appraisal on a investment property, there's a couple additional reports that are requ required, and one of them being a rental survey. So they're going to they're gonna look into what the, the tenants that are, um, and I say tenants because in case it's a fourplex maybe, um, or a duplex, but even a single family, what, what if there's a tenant in place right now, what they're paying. But they're also going to look at what the market rents are, what you could actually be getting for that property. 
Right. Um, so they're going to look at both of those. Yeah. Right. And, you know, on the show, I've talked a lot about like fourplexes and different areas and different things. But duplexes is something that I feel like is so overlooked. You know, it's cash it is. on I the table. I think so. I think, yeah, more people go for the fourplexes and the duplexes. Yeah. yeah, but the duplexes are super affordable. I mean, they're older. They're in older parts of town and everything like that. They're super affordable. And then you have two. You have two, you mm -hmm. know, side by side income yeah. producing properties. It's mm -hmm. definitely something that I think is a good purchase as yeah. well. And something that people can consider when it comes to duplex or fourplex is, is um, you know, you can actually buy that as a primary residence. Mm -hmm. um, you're going to be, you know, living in one and rent the other units, yeah. you know, and, and get those three, you know, like in a fourplex, get those three rents and actually qualify with those three other rents. Yeah. Um, so that helps a lot. And, you know, you're basically living for free and making money off the property. Absolutely. So that's something people are able to do as well. Yep, absolutely. And I don't know if this is in your realm or my realm. I know it's definitely in my realm, but I'm going to ask you as well. Is there a certain amount of properties that you can manage on your own before you're required to hire a property manager? No, there isn't. Okay. But I will say this. As, a, as somebody <laughs> that owned, <laughs> this is just from my personal experience. I'll say that first. But I owned uh, a couple of rental properties, one being a fourplex. And the biggest mistake I did was to not hire a management company. Right. And especially me because I'm like the softest landlord. Like, <laughs> oh, you don't have my rent this month. It's okay. Hey, and I just, you, I, it, you know, but the process of actually... Um, you know, it, it, when you have a management company, you're like the third party. They take care of everything, especially the calls for something that broke. They take care of all that, you know what I mean? So it's worth the, the, the percentage they charge for the management. Um, and then just the, the, you know, the emotion's not there. So if they have to evict someone, they do the process, which is not the most simplest process. But again, I say this from experience. I ended up selling my properties um, because I just wasn't managing them well, to be honest. Mm -hmm. um, it was too time consuming and I was too... Yeah, like I said, I was too nice uh, yeah. with people that couldn't pay sometimes. And sometimes that, you get taken yeah. advantage of for being yeah, too nice. They yeah. know when so, they know if they so, call. Uh, but I will, at, you know, right now I just have my home, but I will, I do plan on, on investing again in, in, in more rental properties with the management company. No question. Yeah. So it's just my recommend, personal recommendation, I'll say that. Yeah, most definitely. <laughs> but there is no requirement as to having, you don't, to finance more properties, you don't have to have a management company. We're not going to require you to do that. Okay, yeah. perfect. And, and yeah, I, I know, you know, sometimes people will, you know, buy a income producing property and say, oh, you know, my brother or my sister, somebody wants to live in there. And I, I always, I, and I tell people that I, I hate to be the bad guy with it, but I say, you know, that might be a red flag because if it ever comes a time where they can't pay, you're, it, it's going to be, you're, it's going to yeah, put you in a predicament. It's nepotism. It's just like anything, like yeah. hiring someone that work <laughs> to work for you and then they don't. Decide they don't want to show up to work some days. Yeah, yeah, it <laughs> it's definitely. It's not much different, you know, so it's not, yeah, you, yeah. you got to make sure that they're going to pay. Yeah, you got to keep business and personal a mm. little separated, even, you know, with this, in this case, where you go into purchasing mm. investment properties. So can you use this loan type to do flips? Like if you wanted to purchase it, renovate it, flip it, sell it next month, is this the type of loan you would use for that? No, not not with a, a regular mortgage bank, um, you know, because we're in the business of financing and, you know, the, obviously that's how the banks make money, financing the loan and the, over the payments and the interest. So there are there are companies out there that that do um, that do offer um, you know, uh, financing for flips, but they're getting a lot of their money up front. That way, when you do flip it, it's they still made their money, but right. banks make their money in the long run, typically. So they're not looking to finance somebody that's going to flip it right away. Right. So I assume with this type of loan, just like with any type of loan, mortgage financing, you really want to work with the, the buyers and the clients that have the intent of holding it for a minimum six months. But really, if you're looking for an investment property, you want to plan on holding it a lot longer than that. Yeah, I'm not sure why anybody would buy, want to, you know, it'd have to be some, some crazy appreciation all of a sudden for anybody <laughs> to even want to sell it in that quick a time. Because when they bought the house the property, they had to pay closing costs or things they invested in. So unless they're going to make that and more, it wouldn't make a, a, a lot more. I don't, I don't think it would make sense. To me, real estate, especially investment, is buy and hold. You know, if you're in the in the in the business of flipping, buying homes, uh, you know, finding properties out there, distressed properties that need need work, and you can fix them up and sell them. That's different. Uh, but again, that's not the type of financing a, a mortgage bank does. Yeah, that would be like non-QM, like something outside the box. You know, those. Mm -hmm. And rates get crazy and all the other stuff, but those yeah. are outside of the box financing yeah. types. Mm -hmm. Yeah, which we'll talk yeah. about that. We're going to talk about that on the show actually next week is all of those things that don't qualify for traditional um, traditional financing. Yes. So, um, so that will be one thing. Um, is there a limit to how many 
income producing properties you can own with loans attached to them? Yeah, typically it's with loans attached to them. Typically it's 10 um, properties wow. financed, but yeah, but you can exceed that. Um, there are some requirements and I, I don't remember off the top of my head, obviously, mm -hmm. but you can exceed the 10, 10 finance properties with certain requirements, you know. And, and you don't have to be, you don't have to be a millionaire well, you know, or, or make a million dollars at your no. regular job or, you know, regular income to be able to do this that because the properties themselves help qualify for the further properties, right. correct? Yeah. Like I've mentioned with my, my clients recently, you know, the one, the one gentleman buying seven fourplexes right now, he owns two properties already. He's looking to buy more. Um, and he has decent, he, he's a self-employed, he has decent income, but he's really qualifying with all the rents. Right. Yeah. So I, I, I'm also going to address the elephant in the room because there's probably things that people are thinking of. Yeah, that? yeah, he's right Looking. there. <laughs> <laughs> so there's probably things that people are thinking of out there um, right now. We have this uh, moratorium going on, right? So um, there are tenants out there that are not paying rent. Is yeah. there, or are you aware of like relief that um, investors are having with that? Is that something that basically they just have to have six months reserves to cover in instances of cases like that? How, as a mortgage lender, are you guys addressing this situation on the qualification, or is it something that's even being so addressed? So anytime you buy an investment property, they require you to have reserves. Um, the reserve amount depends on how many properties you own already. Okay. It's a, typically a percentage, or, or it's a, like six months reserves. What reserves are, it means like if the mortgage payment is $1,500 and you need six months reserves, you need six times that. So what is that? nine grand I think mm -hmm. you have to have that in your bank after the money you're going to spend on buying the property you still have to have that money sitting in the bank it's not going to be used for anything but it's just a cushion that you're showing the bank they don't want you spending every dollar you have on an investment property yeah or not especially gambling. because there's vacancy percentages you know you're, you might have the property vacant for a while there might be some st the stuff that needs to be fixed and things like that so yeah you're going to want reserves in case something happens as far as the rental more term I don't know much about it honestly yeah. but I would assume that when people are buying these properties that um, that's all being disclosed up front um, that you know the, the research is being done as far as, by their agents as far as that that, that property rent is rolls. receiving its rent rent rolls there you go. yeah rent That's rolls and, and that is that is as an agent when I'm working with people that are buying investment properties yeah. I'm and there is even you know one that was self managed we were working with recently they had they kept they, they kept no rent records and mm. we <laughs> we required deposit statements we're like you know the the tenants right. are paying you somehow we have to be able to verify yeah. this yeah. um so it, it's definitely doing that due diligence is very important because the situation that we're in there are people out there they're paying rent and you don't want to end up purchasing a property that already has a tenant in it that the tenant's not right. paying and right. now someone else's problem you just inherited yeah, so. and, that, and the way you said that makes me think of something also because, and that's not something we look at the rent rolls. Like I said, they do verify what the rent supposed to be, the, the lease is for and what's actual, but you can actually buy a property that's vacant as well. Yes. Um, because again, part of that survey that the appraiser does is how much the property can rent for. And that's what we're going to use that percentage, that 75% of that. So the property doesn't have to be rented for you to be able to buy it. Oh, okay, perfect. Yeah. So it can be vacant. You don't have to like rent it out while you're in escrow or anything like no. that. Do you have a certain amount of time before you need to get a renter in there? Uh, well, that's not something we're going to know about, honestly. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And you know, that's Cause it's going to be after it could be out, it's, you know, after the fact. Yeah. Typically, people are, you're not going to rent a property out until after you bought it. You're yeah. not going to put somebody, you can set it up, yeah. but you're not going to put them in there. You can't put them in there. So Absolutely. Um, after the fact, but that's once we close, we close. We're not going to verify whether you rented it out or not. But okay. That has to do with the reserves as well, because it maybe it takes a while to rent it. Yeah. You know what I mean? So that, that's why they require the reserves on investment properties. Yeah. These markets these days, rentals are going so fast. <laughs> I, yeah. I don't think anybody uh, have a property a problem with that. Yeah. I'd be surprised to find a home that's not rentable. So yeah. it's, uh, it, it's anything's pretty much renting these days. Mm -hmm. um, there's just a lot of people moving here. So it is, it's a great time to have, you know, an investment property. You're going to get those, probably your vacancy rates are going to be super low and you're going to get good good amount of, of income for, for rent. So, mm -hmm. so Arturo, there's a lot of stuff that we caught that we covered today and I'm sure people are going to have questions and I'm sure you're happy to take their questions when they call you. Absolutely. Call and, me anytime. Okay. Uh, I think my, was my information up there somewhere? Yeah. Go ahead and tell you people your me, phone number, how me. to call you. Uh, I'll be more than happy to answer any questions. I, I actually enjoy it. it. It makes me, it makes me sharper to answer your questions. Yes, <laughs> absolutely. And I know, like I said, I, I, I only have professionals on this show, so you can very much guarantee that the people 
people that I have that I'm interviewing on the show are going to be efficient. They're going to take your calls. They're going to answer your questions. Mm -hmm. And Arturo does a very good job. He does his research. If he doesn't know the answer to a question, he's going to find Absolutely. out the answer. Yeah. And he's a very amazing lender. I've been working with him since the beginning when I first started in my career. So. I remember that. Yes. <laughs> yeah, I remember when I first met you. Yes. Yeah, you were so brand new. I, I was and brand I look, new. And I look at you. You have your own show. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Um, yeah, so um, so definitely if you have questions, you can reach out to Arturo. You can reach out to me. Um, we're definitely happy to help you and get you into making mailbox money. So you can make money in your sleep, hire a property manager. You don't even have to deal with it. Start making that passive income that can help build wealth for your future. Absolutely. Uh, thank you so much for joining us today. I'm your host, Trish Williams. If you're watching our show, please share it with your friends. Te Take a moment to write a review. Um, tell us what you think. Tell us what you want to hear. I'm trying to plan future shows, so I definitely want to know feedback from you guys on what you want us to talk about in the future. Thank you so much. You guys have a wonderful week.